Hello, I'm Pastor Keith Mazingo of Metropolitan Community Church of Baton Rouge. I want to thank you for clicking on the video of our worship message. Please go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mccbr to see the entire worship service, including prayers, special music, and communion. You're also welcome to join us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for worship service. Stay tuned after the message for information on how you can stay in touch with us. Today we continue in our Lenten series called Naked Faith, Revealing Resurrection, which will end obviously on Easter Sunday. Today's message is on asking the questions. Now there's a game called Questions. Some of you may have played it before. One person asks a question, and then the next person answers by asking another question. And each person that continues has to keep asking questions because if you make a statement, you foul out. So for instance, if I ask you, what's your name? You could say, why do you want to know? And I could say, why do you care? And we could go on from there. But each question leads to another question instead of to a statement. I found one this week that you music lovers might like, another game of questions. It was a what if game. So each, each question begins with what if, so, and each one is about songs. Ray, you'll love this. What if Rihanna didn't work, 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 work? What if Tina Turner didn't always love you? What if James Brown never felt good? What if Easy e never cruised down the street in his 64? What if TLC didn't go chasing waterfalls? I like that. What if Beyonce didn't see your halo? We could go on. There were like 2,500 of those yesterday on Facebook. I about jumped out of my seat screaming at some of them. It was so funny. Questions. We all have questions. You may have come to church with questions today. At least you've all had questions at one time or another. We've all asked them. Hopefully we've gotten some answers. In our reading today, we find Nicodemus had questions. And I want you to get this and think about this for a second. Nicodemus was asking Jesus, who we call God, Jesus questions. Now think about that for a second. I just find it interesting, the fact that Nicodemus could ask Jesus questions. And I think that gives us permission to ask Jesus questions. Well, why would I point that out? Well, it's because most of us were probably, if you were taught like me, you were taught that you didn't ask people in authority questions. You didn't ask the preacher questions. You didn't ask your parents questions. If they told you this is what it was, you didn't ask why or what. You didn't play the game of questions with them. If your teacher told you something, you accepted that. If the police officer said something, you believed them. And God forbid that if the church preached something, taught something, stood for something, you ever questioned it at all. And let's go a little deeper because you know I'm, I, you know how I am. I'll just keep going out there deeper as oceans song said a while ago, in the deep water. If the Bible said it, you didn't question it. And of course, depending on which version of the Bible, it may say something totally different. And God forbid we ask God a question. And especially, we don't ask God why something happens. Here we have Nicodemus, who is a leader in town, a scholar. A scholar. A person who studies a lot, who 
probably knows a lot. And here he is asking the master teacher, Jesus, what is this you're talking about being reborn? What does that mean? What are you talking about? How can that happen? And Jesus, sometimes the impatient teacher, answers with a question. He says, aren't you a teacher here? And aren't you a scholar? Jesus knew how to play the game too. <laughs> Why are you asking me this? Shouldn't you already know the answer? Or perhaps Jesus was not being so impatient, but rather, at least I like to think of it this way, Jesus saw the crowd gathering and wanted to make sure he gave a thorough explanation. And maybe even Nicodemus wanted to know for himself, or maybe he wanted to know for the others around him. Maybe he wanted everyone to understand, so he went into detail. Now, before we're too hard on Nicodemus, it came to me that scholars get to be scholars by asking questions. They have to have a curious spirit, a curious mind. Now think about that. Some of you may be scholars. You weren't born that way necessarily. It's because you have a curious mind and you start asking questions. Now, this thing about being reborn that Jesus explains. I grew up in Pentecost, and in Pentecost, we were taught that there was a moment of salvation. And if you grew up Baptist, you probably knew the Roman road. Some of you know what that is. Those are Bible verses in the book of Romans that will lead you to salvation. As I grew older, though, I looked back over my life, and I realize there have been several rebirths. There has, this is not the Keith that grew up in the Church of God many years ago. I mean, I'm the same flesh, although a little more wrinkledy. <laughs> I'm not now the same Keith. I've been reborn several times since that moment that I confessed in an altar kneeling down praying and asking Jesus to forgive me of my sins and saying, Jesus, I'm inviting you into my heart and I want you to live in me from now on and guide my life at five years old. And it meant something. It really did mean something because it took. And I've been there ever since. But that wasn't the final being born again. Because I remember when I was about 14 or 15, I've, I've told some of you this story, I I was playing the piano for this group and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit began to move and it was like I blacked out. I couldn't hear anybody singing. Now this is a Pentecostal church. When I said the Spirit moved, I mean these people are on their feet. They're dancing in the aisles. They are shouting and carrying on. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They got happy. Those people got happy. And I remember being on the piano stool playing for this group and I felt tongues coming out of me that I could not interpret myself. And I got so lost in it that I could not hear any of the shouting and the praising and the worship going on around me. I couldn't even hear the song that the people were singing and I didn't even know where I was for a few minutes. And when I started coming back to reality I was still playing and they said later that I never missed a piano note. Thank God that would have been terribly embarrassing on the spirit. Several years later, when I was trying to figure out who Keith really was and how do I deal with the Keith that I know inside that's different than the people see Keith, what am I going to do with that Keith and who is he? And God, you know my prayer for many years was, God, when will you take away this thing that plagues my mind? I had questions for God. I had questions like Nicodemus, when, when is this going to go away? When are my attractions going to go away? When are my feelings going to go away? When is this going to be changed? And I'm 
normal. And when I'm going to be acceptable. And when I'm not going to be unclean. And I'd say, Lord, I need you to help me. I went through prayer line after prayer line. And you know, in Pentecostal churches, they love their prayer lines. They'll pray the gay away. They'll pray the devils away. They'll pray your sickness away. And I'm not saying that all of that's bad. I think it's a wonderful thing because I've been healed many times of physical ailments. I saw my grandmother healed of cancer instantaneously by the touch of prayer in that moment. So I believe in that. But every prayer line I went through, none of that part changed. That part never got healed. And I got a word of prophecy from a lady named Joyce Hamby. And it was nothing unusual for Joyce Hamby to come and lay hands on people in church and prophesy over them and give them a word from the Lord because that was a praying woman. And she would pray for you during the week and she would come and give a word over you on the weekend. And I loved it when she came to me because I'm going to tell you what, I could always feel fire going all the way through me when she touched me. And I knew God was speaking. I knew God was saying something important. And I tried to write down a lot of that stuff. And I want you to know the flood didn't carry away my words of prophecy. <laughs> I knew what was important paperwork to take with me when I went. And I grabbed that, that envelope out of my bedside table where I keep it. This time she walked up to me. I was college age, by the way. She walked up to me and handed me an envelope with a letter inside. And she said, I was praying for you this week and God gave me a word for you. But God, when I, I, but God said, write it down. He'll need it later. So I took it home and I read it. And in that, in that word of prophecy, there were these words. You've asked over and over. When will I take away these things that plague you, plague your mind? And I had never told anybody my prayer. I have already delivered you from this thing that plagues your mind if you will but accept it. And then later on it said, and one day you will look back at this and ask the question, why could I not see this before? It was so simple. Now, I should have known, because, you know, I started begging and pleading and begging and pleading and begging and pleading for God to go ahead and tell me something. I should have paid more attention to that. You'll look back on this part because it was going to be another <laughs> few years of still praying that same prayer and not knowing and understanding why I could not figure out God's words and why the Holy Spirit continued to bless me and while I still had the desire to do God's work and be in God's business of helping other people finding rebirth themselves. <coughs> and yet I was in need of a rebirth, just like Nicodemus, just like all of the other disciples. We all needed a rebirth. And I didn't know how to do that. And I've told you this story before, but it bears repeating. Several years after that word of prophecy came, I was in graduate school at East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina, and I, my roommate was in class, and I was at home at the apartment by myself, lying on the couch and praying that same old prayer that I'd been praying for years. Lord, when... When will this thing that plagues my mind go away? When, when will I be delivered from this? And I got up and went to the sink in the kitchen. I think I was going to get a glass of water or something, and as I was standing there, the Holy Spirit finally spoke back. And the Spirit said, what do you play? Ask me a question. You know, I ask a question, the Spirit asks me a question. What do you play on the piano? What do you play for the altar call? And immediately I said, 
just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood is shed for me. And the Spirit said, stop. Back up. So I went back to the beginning and I said, just as I am, without one plea. And the Spirit said, stop. Back up. And I said, just as I am. And people don't always know this to be real, but I believe in these things. But I saw a little cloud, a little cartoon cloud with a light bulb in it. In that moment, I looked up to my right, and when I said, just as I am, the light bulb came on. And in that moment was a moment of rebirth. In that moment, I was totally naked before God. I was not totally naked in in the flesh, but I was totally naked spiritually. God knew exactly who I was, and I knew all of a sudden God in a deeper way than I had ever known. And I'm going to tell you, I could never tell that without crying because the Holy Spirit comes back every single time I tell that story. The Spirit comes back, and I see and I feel in that moment the peace that passes all understanding. That moment, I knew what that scripture meant. And from that moment until this moment, I've never once ever questioned it again. I've never once worried about was I okay with God? Was God okay with me? I've never once worried about whether God saw me as unclean or not or whether God saw me. I just knew I had been called and that God accepted me just the way I was, just the way I was created, just as I am. You know what I did, right? Besides having a Holy Ghost minute. I went running back to my bedroom. I got that envelope that was several years old from Joyce Hamby. Because the first thing I had said when I started running down the hallway, I said, God! Why did it take so long? It was so simple. I was delivered all along because there was nothing to be delivered from except me and faulty theology and faulty preachers and faulty churches and even faulty parents. Because when the Spirit speaks, you see, it trumps everything. It trumps all of it. It means there's nothing to go back to. It's a rebirth. So I know what it's like to be reborn over and over and over again in my life. Oh, you know I grabbed that envelope and read it. It's like, one day you'll look back on this and say, why did it take so long? It was so simple. You're already delivered. When I found Metropolitan Community Church, I had a rebirth too. And since I've been in Baton Rouge, Miss D will probably tell you more than anybody else. Because she was here the Sunday of my, um, when I was here candidating to be your pastor, and she was one of two people that asked questions of me after service that day and after I spoke that day. She wanted to know that I used the scriptures in all of my sermons. And I said, well, yes, I do. (laughs) And I may use some other things too, but that's the basis of our sermons here. And she must have been happy with that. She turned in a green card, which was a good thing. But I've changed also through these years, through these 11 years that I've been here. My theology has changed. My view of God has changed. My view of what we're supposed to be doing in the community has changed dramatically. And it scared me at first because when you start straying away from what you've been taught, it's a scary thing. And I've had to ask God lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of questions along the way. God, is this okay? Am I going to be okay here? Am I going to lose you, God? Are you going to walk away from me? Of course, I knew the answer to that. 
Because as long as you're asking that question, you know God's not going anywhere. God's not scared of us. God created us. Being a part of the Interfaith Federation around here has helped me immensely to know who my neighbors really are. To know that my path to God is not the only path to God and that it's okay if my Muslim neighbors about six blocks over this way are worshiping the same God I'm worshiping. If the Jewish people right down the street at the synagogue yesterday were worshiping, today are probably having Sunday school classes. The same God that I serve. And they even honor our prophet Jesus. And that's good. I should give them the same respect to honor their prophets that got them there. We ask the question, why, a lot. Why? Why did it take so long? Why does it have to be this way? Why did I make that decision? God, why did you create things this way? Why did you create me this way? And why can't I have an answer immediately to all of my questions, God? <laughs> That's usually my biggest question. I want an immediate answer, please. And maybe the answer to that is because sometimes our life experiences, our research, our meeting others who are different than us, teaches us something new. Teaches us that we are about to be reborn and Jesus answered that question even with Nicodemus, didn't he? At the end of that reading, he says, you've got to have some experiences first before you know all of the answers. There's a reading from Rainer Maria Rilke in Letters to a Young Poet. Be patient toward all that is unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves like locked rooms and like books that are written in a very foreign tongue. Do not now seek the answers which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the question now. Perhaps you will then gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. Pretty powerful words. One of our elders who became the second moderator of our denomination, Nancy Wilson. First time I heard her preach, she was pastoring Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles. And I was a real conservative little Pentecostal <laughs> who didn't question a whole lot of things in the church or in the scriptures. And she preached a sermon that she said over and over, question everything. Amen. And I thought, Lord, I have come to this liberal West Coast. <laughs> what is she talking about? question everything that was you know 30 years ago or longer but today I would tell you to question everything that it's okay don't be afraid of asking don't be afraid of answers and don't be afraid of waiting for an answer don't worry if it doesn't come immediately. Maybe you have to wait until another life experience takes you there. Or you meet the right person that's different from you that opens your eyes to things that you didn't know before. Or maybe you just have to have a moment with the Spirit getting a glass of water at the kitchen sink. As Jesus said to Nicodemus, 
Sometimes you can't take it in all at one time. Sometimes you've got to take it in little by little. Look back over your life and answer this question. How many times have you been reborn? Amen. Again, thank you for watching our worship message video on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified of other video posts. You can also watch our worship service in its entirety by going to facebook.com slash mccbr. You can watch us live on Facebook at 11 a.m. Central every Sunday. Visit our webpage at mccbr.org where you can find our calendar of events as well as other information about our church and our denomination. Like our Facebook page so you can be notified of our other live events. Thank you again, and may you have a blessed week. Whether here and now, or another time, not even height or depth, whether strong or weak, in the face of the future, or the powers that be, you are not separated.